reveals the original absolute truth as Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally pure, free from all contamination, devoid of sorrow, and immortal. Finally, it gives true devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Hari, who takes away all misery from the aspiring devotee's heart. So, in the beginning of the path, especially, we cannot see all these things. We have very limited understanding of spiritual truth because our spiritual intelligence is covered by material mind, body, and senses. This is called conditioned consciousness or material consciousness. So, because the only source of information we have is through our bodily senses, we cannot be uh, sure that what we are seeing is actually the truth. In fact, most of the time it's not. It's simply some conditional bodily interpretation of reality. So we have to have a source of information that is beyond the limitations of conditioned material consciousness. This source of information is the Vedic scriptures and the teaching coming down through the line of realized spiritual masters, beginning with the Lord himself, who passed the original teaching to Lord Brahma, and Lord Brahma to his sons and other descendants and disciples, coming down to the present day. This is the esoteric teaching, and this teaching is summarized in Bhagavad Gita, but explained in detail in Srimad Bhagavatam. Therefore, we should take these scriptures to heart as our most important sources of ontological knowledge. Why? Because they are giving all three dimensions of spiritual realization as given in the Vedas, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. There are many sources of spiritual knowledge, but few of them reveal these three transcendental dimensions fully. Uh, many Western religions regard God only as the creator and the supplier of our material necessities, but this is actually a material concept of God. If you look up God in the dictionary, the word God is defined as the creator and controller of the material world, uh, which some religions conceive of as being appeased through prayer and worship. So this is a very limited and uh, uh, poverty-stricken definition of God. God is much more than that. Of course, God is the creator and controller of everything. However, even though he supplies the needs of all living entities, he is not our order supplier. He is not our servant. Actually, we are his servants. The esoteric teaching brings this out and encourages us to realize our eternal nature as a servant of God. And when we do this, we suddenly find a whole new realm open to us. Our consciousness comes upon a completely new dimension of experience, and this is the spiritual reality. This spiritual reality has three dimensions, Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan, or the impersonal spiritual effulgence, the all-pervading super-soul, the friend in the heart, and the Supreme Personality of Godhead himself, who has many forms and many incarnations. And all this is explained in detail in Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Gita gives only a summary. But it's very important that we start with Bhagavad Gita because it gives us the background knowledge that we need to understand Srimad Bhagavatam. Just like when you go to school, first you study arithmetic, uh, addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. And then later on in high school you get into algebra, trigonometry, and the uh, different types of physical problems uh, that you can solve with math. If you try to study high school algebra without knowing uh, grade school arithmetic, it would be incomprehensible. 
And similarly, if you try to read Srimad Bhagavatam without having studied Bhagavad Gita well, then you will become confused. Guaranteed. Why? You will not have the ontological background to comprehend the intricacies of the science of God. It's just like studying high school algebra without having arithmetic under your belt. A very difficult proposition. So we encourage people to study Bhagavad Gita. How? Not just by reading, but by actual experience, as we will uh, soon get into in our studies here of the esoteric teaching. The Bhagavad Gita contains an entire science of how to work, how to work without karmic results. Everyone in this material world is subject to karma because we are working for our own benefit. As long as we are the beneficiaries of our work, we have to suffer the results of karma. That means the material effect of which our work is the cause. Because of this, we have to take another body in this material world. Now, to attain liberation, we have to become free from karma, but nobody can maintain their body without work. So what is the solution? To work for God and make God the beneficiary of our activities. This is called karma yoga. And what this does is it frees us from the karmic reaction to our work. This is a great science, but it has to be learned by experience. It can't be learned without careful guidance. Therefore, the esoteric teaching recommends that we study Bhagavad Gita under a master teacher. And by his direction, we will come out to understand it properly. Similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is mystic yoga at its height. But it can't be learned by theory only. It has to be learned by experience. Therefore, we also recommend that one studies Srimad Bhagavatam with a teacher in a community of students dedicated to that study. That's really the only way in which it's possible to study Srimad Bhagavatam uh, as it is, without distortion, without change, and get the correct result. And what is that result? Samadhi. Samadhi is a mental state in which the consciousness is restrained from material mental activity and totally focused on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Samadhi is so wonderful that anyone who attains it, even for a moment, feels that there is no greater attainment, there is no greater gain, there's no greater benefit that anyone could attain than this Samadhi. And when one has Samadhi firmly in his grasp, then he no more cares for liberation, uh, what to speak of sense gratification, wealth, fame, or any of those things. He simply wants to relish this Samadhi eternally because in this state of Samadhi, we find our perfect body. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of My Perfect Body. This is David Hughes, your host, reminding you to visit us on the web at esotericteaching.org, where you can purchase the complete Esoteric Teaching Introductory Seminar DVD and many CDs of Transcendental Music and Mantras.